Marilyn, in your landmark book of 1980, The Aquarian Conspiracy, you wrote that whether or not it is written in the stars, a different age seems to be upon us. An age of Aquarius, the time of a man's true liberation. Further, you said that we are entering a millennium of love and light. And yet today, we are caught in the throes of terrorism and violence. This being the case, do you believe that we really are at the dawning of a new age? And are you optimistic about peace? My position in the Aquarian Conspiracy was, uh, I would think, cautious optimism. That is, I said, it looked as if we were moving into a new time and that there had been many and prophecies and statements anticipating it and there were a lot of signs that it was happening but there could always be disruptions because you can't anticipate all the twists and turns of history and the forces of history and that in order for there to be a really significant change in modern societies and modern civilizations um, we need to take into account whether or not we are going to blow ourselves up or destroy ourselves ecologically before these shifts can occur. In other words, there's a movement, there is a momentum, which is stronger than ever. You know, as, as we sit here talking now, I would say that there's far more evidence of a change of thinking now than there was when the Aquarian Conspiracy was published in 1980. And it's much more mainstream. But we are still in the position that was described by H.G. Wells in the 1920s, I think it was, when he said, it's a race between education and catastrophe. Uh, we don't yet know how to deal with the causes of our greatest threats. For example, uh, we seem to know only how to fight terrorism with threats and uh, a kind of um, eye for an eye approach. And even though we, by we I mean uh, the United States, the West and so on, we think of ourselves as being on the side of the angels, so to speak, and that we would only use violence in the cause of good. Uh, obviously, that's what everyone thinks. In other words, we forget that everybody uh, has his or her own rationale for what they do. If we approach the situation in an old-fashioned, um, we will show you that we won't take your violence uh, by responding with violence, we still haven't dealt with the heart of the matter. Because the heart of the matter is what you might call the cognitive error. Uh, it's that we, all of us, have the capacity to justify whatever we do and to feel righteous about whatever we do. And if what I want and what you want are in conflict and I can't somehow transcend my point of view long enough to see that you have one too, then there is going to be enmity between us. And we can't do a surgical bombing to remove misunderstanding. So. What's really needed is an understanding of the other that we don't have yet. And that starts with something we can work on, which is an understanding of myself. And I think that the source of the conflict, this is almost a cliche to say this, this has been said before, but the source of conflict in the world is, source of con is the same as the, the conflict within the individual. Within myself, I have a whole group with different points of view. Um, I think that we're just beginning to appreciate from the research on multiple personality syndrome that this internal um, complexity and multiplicity is not as unusual as we had thought. Now, most of us don't have truly so-called split personalities, but we do have one part that wants to be tough and one part that wants to be soft and one part that is more organized and one that is like the nagging parent and, and all of this. And so there is, a, there is a milieu of conflict, even if it's mild within us as individuals. 
If we can recognize that and begin to make peace among those conflicting selves, that makes it easier to deal with the people in the workplace, with the people in our family. And then we have more of an understanding uh, of the accusations and the counter accusations that go on in the political realm, among advertisers, and in the international arena. In other words, it's like there is a place that is the heart of the issue of war and peace.